This is the True Fay Ink Meister Premium Subscription Box for May 2023. It's my third from this service, and I've noticed some inconsistencies in the packing across those three boxes. Hi, I'm Irene, and this might be my last subscription box from True Fay. Not because I don't think they're worth purchasing, and I'll definitely go over that later in this video. No, it's simply because subscription boxes currently don't fit into the Inkworks budget plan. So those inconsistencies I mentioned, the main one is the outer box itself. For the first two months, it was a craft-colored box with slightly different dimensions, and the third month, it was this white one. And that's an interesting choice, since the included ink was oversized, causing the package to bulge, whereas it would have fit fine in one of the craft-colored boxes. Everything was fine, nothing was damaged, but still, that bulge was unsightly, much like my waistline, but I digress. The other inconsistency was how the box was sealed. For the first one, it wasn't. Seriously, there was no seal at all securing the flap. The other two were sealed with clear packing tape, and I was relieved to see that. But did I worry about it for those second and third boxes? Yes, because I'm a worry wart. I mean, with a lot of things, I'm pretty chill. But the postal service, that's a stress bomb for me. And a mostly needless one, really. Despite the beat-up appearance of this last box, all of the items arrived in good condition, surrounded by the most consistent feature of all, those purple shreds. I said mostly needless, because I have had an ink bottle break in transit, which was disappointing for sure, but I gotta give postal workers kudos for salvaging the other items and getting them to their final destination. So when I say that I worry over packages, that's not a dig at the workers. It's simply the nature of the beast. Like Seinfeld's nemesis Newman so eloquently stated, the mail never stops. It just keeps coming and coming and coming. A possible touch on True Faye's part that might go a long way, perhaps a small extra, such as a piece of candy or a mini notepad with their branding on it you know, to remind us to order more stuff. And I don't know about you, but whenever I receive a box, there's always that little bit of hope there's chocolate inside. Just a thought. But on to the items themselves. I'm already a fan of the Lamy Safari fountain pen, so I was very happy to receive another one especially in this lovely matte cream color. I believe this was originally a limited edition from 2022, along with a strawberry red version, evoking the classic dessert combo of strawberries and cream. I've seen this at online retailers, listed for around $30. Producer Mike and I try to stay around the $20 range for fountain pens, so yeah, this was a pleasant surprise. Full disclosure, the footage here was taken earlier this month, and I've been using and enjoying this pen for the last couple of weeks. It has a fine nib. While I sometimes find fine nibs to be too narrow for my taste, the Lamy fine nib is actually a good match for my writing style. And I believe that's because it's German-made. Asian-made nibs seem to run smaller than European ones. Now, onto the ink. 
that bottle shape, which is exclusive to their Crystal Ink series, is a nice improvement over the other Lamy bottles I have, the ones with the blotting paper bottom. This one is nicely shaped and balanced. The opening is large, and there's a rubber insert inside the cap that ensures a tight seal. Now, since I didn't have an empty Lamy converter, I rinsed out the included cartridge and filled that with the Crystal Topaz ink, and that worked just fine. The warm, almost sienna-like brown rings my bell for sure. It reminds me of the color red-brown from Magello's Mission Gold watercolors. I adore red-brown. Not to be mistaken for the Canadian TV show, Red Green, but I adore that, too. There's been more than one night when I've fallen asleep during a red-green viewing marathon and dreamt of Possum Lodge living, duct tape fixes, and endless plaid flannel. So, wrapping up my True Fae subscription box experience... The first one from March was great and probably the most bang for the buck. The pen was a Monteverde Ritma, which normally sells for around $40, and the bottle of ink was Monteverde's Rose Noir. The orange barrel of the pen and the purple of the ink really appealed to my love of Halloween-y colors, the second one was a disappointment. The Coeco Perkio fountain pen was irksome, and the color of the Visconti ink was very, very pale. So neither of them are things I would use. The third box is very much to my liking. The Lamy Safari fountain pen and the Lamy crystal ink are both in colors that I totally dig. In fact, I've been using this ink and pen combination for a couple of weeks now and really enjoying it. Just for funsies, I'm going to grade all three of the Inkmeister premium boxes I received from Truffay. March gets an A because I liked the products and also because I felt there was really good value because the pen alone was a $40 item. It doesn't get a plus, though, because no candy. April gets a C-. minus. I couldn't give it a D, because I think if I performed some tweaking, I could probably make both the pen and the ink usable. Tweaks such as fiddling with the nib and mixing the ink with another darker one. So, a small work investment might yield good results. May gets an A-. minus. The pen and ink are both wonderful. So, why the minus? Because of the bulging, banged-up box, yes, but also because I feel there wasn't as much value as the March box. Is that fair? Or am I speaking from a place of hanger? Oh, <sighs> guess I gotta scrounge for some chocolate. You know, since there wasn't any in the box. So, averaging things out, this three-month experiment gets a B from the Inkworks Product Evaluation Department. I love mushrooms, whether raw or cooked. In salads, stews, soups, sauces, gravies, pastas, casseroles, pizzas, burgers, anything and everything, really. One way I like to have them is something I've never seen anyone else do, and that's to make a mushroom sandwich. That's right. Mayonnaise on bread and sliced raw shrooms with just a pinch of salt and pepper. Sliced white loaf will work, but a split bun or roll is even better. Heck, maybe even toss some cheese in there. The land of shroom sandwiches is a lawless landscape after all. 
I'm happy to share these subscription boxes with you. I went in a tad pessimistic. There were ups and there were downs. But on the whole, it turned out to be a positive experience. One that we may try again further down the road. Until next time, keep your nibs clean and your bottles closed tight. And stay inky, my friends.